GutterRectCoach.com. Why the capsule rexus matters so much. And it's especially important for toric lenses. So let's look at this case, the toric lens case. We're measuring out our rexus. And we're going to create that. Now, the advantage of a capsule rexus, even better than a femtosecond laser-created capsulotomy, is that the edges are really strong. By tearing the tissue here, there are no weak edges. It's continuous, it's curvilinear, and there are no weak spots. And the capsule is a little bit elastic. It's why you see some of these cases where we prolapse the nucleus partially out of the capsule bag, and that rexus just stretches. Now, you may not have that same ability if you have a weak or ratty edge or you have a part where it ran out, then you may run into issues of capsular weakness. You could have that rexus edge run out. But if it's continuous like this, there's a strength in that. Look at that. We just prolapse it up. So the rexus is five or five and a half millimeters in diameter. That nucleus is about nine millimeters in diameter. And the nucleus is relatively soft. And then the rexus, the capsule tissue is relatively elastic. So we can get it up. So there's a strength that's really important. There's a strength in making a capsule rexus. So we can emulsify this cataract, chop it up into pieces, and we partially prolapse it out of the capsule back. And I'll frequently do that. So that's one important reason. So you need to have a strong capsule opening. And the capsule rexus, at this point, in my opinion, is the best. Better than a femtosecond laser. Yes, that's true. And so I can remove the nucleus and not have any worries about the capsule edge becoming weak. It's intact. It looks great. Now, there's another big advantage. And that advantage is in holding the IOL. So ideally, you want to have the rexus overlap the optic edge for 360 degrees. And that's going to hold the eye well firmly in position. Now remember, a lot of our lens calculations, the big issue is determining effective lens position, ELP. Where does that eye well end up in the eye? When you take out a four millimeter thick human lens, the cataract, and you replace it with an eye well that's a millimeter or less in thinness, where does the eye well sit? when the capsule bag contracts. And if you have the um, IOL optic held securely for 360 degrees by that rex's edge, it tends to hold in a very secure and more predictable location. So that's an important issue as well. You see, we cleaned up that capsule real nicely, the little capsule polishing there. Let's fill up our capsule bag here. So in a toric lens also, we need to have the lens held not just in the correct anterior to posterior position, with that overlap, but obviously we need to rotate the lens to the correct meridian. And so here comes our toric lens, let's deliver that. Looks like it's going in okay. Oh, not the best loading there by the technician, but we can make that work. So there's the toric lens. You see the toric marks at the haptic optic junction, those three dots on either side. Let's get this lens positioned where we want it. Make sure it gets completely in the capture bag. And you can see on the cornea, there are some marks there that indicate the correct meridian. And they're going to line that up with the toric IOL marks. And that's also why, by the way, we made the incision on that steep axis so that we don't change that um, resultant astigmatic um, axis again. So taking all the viscoelastic, again, we want all the viscoelastic out from behind the IOL, especially with the toric lens. I want that posterior capsule to be in direct contact with the back surface of the optic, and now we can dial this lens in position. This is also the reason why you want to have that rex as well centered, because we're going to rotate this lens and get it into position, and you know, we want to maintain that 360 overlap. You don't want too small of a rexus. With a smaller rexus, a 4 millimeter rexus, let's say, it's a lot easier to keep that 360 overlap, but it's a lot tougher to remove the cataract. Plus, that can be more prone to having capsular phimosis. So let's seal up that incision, and we can kind of verify our positioning of the torque lens in regards to those torque marks. And again, we'll look very carefully at that rexus edge and make sure it does overlap. So let's go in there, readjust that lens position. I'm just dialing it in. Oh, look at that. It looks great. So that's about a five and a half millimeter rexus, beautifully positioned, nice overlap for 360. I can tell you this patient had a beautiful outcome. We're aiming for just plano distance vision, and this patient had three diopters of pre-existing coronal astigmatism, and we achieved very, very close to that plano outcome. The patient was 20-20 uncorrected, and a very happy patient. At the end here, we'll seal up those incisions, 
and check to make sure everything was good. So take pride in your Rexes. You know this. You're a big fan of cataract coach and get it right every time. Thanks for watching these videos. Be sure to check out the website too, cataractcoach.com. You'll get the full text and the graphics and the photos plus the videos. And if you sign up for a free daily email, we'll send all of that to you in your inbox every day for free. Come on. cataractcoach.com. Check it out.